Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome. Welcome to another week. This is the Global Community for Adult Survivors of Complex Trauma. Any type of childhood trauma in the form of abuse. This is where we show up. We've been doing this every week. Here's showing up online, supporting one another. And I'm so happy you've chosen to join us this week's topic. We're on a series talking about feelings. And this week's feeling that we're talking about is why good feelings are triggering for us. Why good feelings feel scary or um, uncomfortable or they cause us to spin out and move immediately into feelings of dread and hopelessness and helplessness and fear and unsafety. And that can all start with a good feeling or a compliment that someone gives us or a promotion that we get or a financial situation that happens in our favor or um, a good text message or a phone call or something hopeful that's coming our way. Um, these are areas of our life as adult survivors of complex trauma, um, mostly for those of us who endured our trauma in childhood. So if you are living with CPTSD symptoms, um, or you've been diagnosed with CPTSD, or you are a complex trauma survivor, but the complex trauma that you endured is something that happened only in adulthood after the age of, let's say, 10, 12, 14 years old. The videos on this channel will be helpful for you and encouraging, but they might not resonate deeply the way that a lot of the videos do if your trauma happened in your younger years. Pre-verbal abuse, abuse during very, very, very young years, formative years, um, early, early adolescence, when, when your brain is at its most neuroplastic state. So welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, showing up to support one another. Thank you for just your unending emails, your calls, your voice messages, everything that you do in this community week after week. I just wanna say thank you, thank you. I know I say it every week, but you guys are the most important part of this community and why this channel is so powerfully healing. It's all you guys. Um, this is a safe place. If you are a troll or a bully or you are unkind to anyone on this channel, you will be blocked and never welcome back. Let me just read through some really quick PSAs and give you some uh, hotline information. Um, thank you once again for being here in this week's topic is uh, we're on a series navigating through um, feelings during CPTSD recovery and this week's feeling is hopefulness or good feelings or excitement or happiness or joy and why those trip us up and cause us to not feel well. So welcome to another week of No More Shame live Q&A, adult survivors of child abuse, incest, human trafficking, narcissistic abuse, complex trauma, and cult abuse, living with CPTSD or CPTSD symptoms. Trigger warning, tonight is going um, to discuss abuse, trafficking, and complex trauma. And this oftentimes um, will come in the in the form of questions sent in by you. This is Q&A. Um, and the questions sent in by you, our community, contain, can sometimes contain graphic details. So please practice self-care while participating. And if you are looking to receive support, share support, or acquire some new healthier life skills, then you've landed in an excellent place. Um, what questions? What questions do you have? Please send them in. Please tag Matt at Beyond Your Past. He is a moderator on this channel and um, has been helping out for a couple years now. He's um, a great source of support. And as, as most of you know, uh, please send in your questions. I'll be answering them in just, just a few minutes. And for the remainder of the video, I'll be answering your questions starting in about 10 to 15 minutes or so. So um, I am going to just give us give you guys some hotline information and then share a little example of what it is I'm talking about and go through the framework that we've been working through in the last seven to eight weeks on feelings. So um, thank you all for being here and supporting one another. As a reminder, this chat and video is not nor is it a therapeutic service or a diagnosis of any kind. If you want or need therapy, please always, always 
always see qualified experienced professional. YouTube is never a substitute for professional healthcare. And while I am trauma informed, I am not a doctor or a psychologist. All of my videos are shared from a lived experience coaching perspective. I openly discuss research that I have personally conducted over the course of my 17 or 18 year healing journey. Uh, topic research may also have been curated by our dedicated volunteers. That's you guys, uh, interns or community members. Again, trigger warning, tonight's video will discuss abuse, trafficking, and CPTSD, and the questions sent in by you guys can, can, be, can be quite graphic. So if you're in crisis right now, uh, or you get to a place where you're feeling triggered or you are in crisis, please, uh, if you're a rape, abuse, or incest survivor, call our friends over at RAIN, 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. If you are contemplating suicide, you're actively suicidal, please call our friends at the Suicide Prevention Hotline and Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and that's 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. If you are in a place where you are self-harming or you're contemplating self-harm, please call 1-800-366-8288. If you are living with an addiction, struggling um, with any type of addictive behaviors, please, rather than shame yourself and woulda, shoulda, your, woulda, shoulda, coulda yourself all over the place, call our friends over at 1-800-662-4357. If you're currently living with an eating disorder, again, rather than shame yourself or stay stuck, please reach out. When you feel safe, please reach out to 1-800-931-2237 or 1-888-233-6949. If you are in an unsafe situation, in a domestic violence situation, you're currently in a narcissistically abusive relationship, and you are not, reach out to our friends at 1-800-799-SAFE, S-A-F-E. And if you're struggling with grief and you're grieving, grieving the, the loss of your innocence, grieving a childhood that you never had, grieving the loss of a loved one, um, grieving, if you're feeling feelings of grief, reach out to 1-800-395-5755. And if you prefer to text like so many people do, text the word START to 741-741 and our friends at the tech crisis text line.org will respond to you, ask you a few questions, get your consent to text back and forth with you, and then ultimately refer you to someone in your local area. So please take a moment now and tweet out one of those numbers. Tweet out one of those telephone numbers or one of the websites or something. Uh, share it on Facebook, share it on social media, copy it onto your clipboard uh, clipboard, and, and be a part of saving lives. It will have only taken you a moment to do that and you could save a life. So. Um, if you made it here live for the weekly discussion, thank you for giving this video a thumbs up. I show up here sometimes before I even start recording and I have several thumbs down. Today, I didn't. Today I had six thumbs up before I got here and I was like, hey, we're starting off in the plus this week. This is awesome. So you guys ask me every week, how can I support the work you're doing, Athena, and the best way is to give the videos a thumbs up, share them if you find them helpful, and leave comments below. If you are on a replay or if you're here live right over here in the chat box, um, we're having an open discussion or over on Twitter using the hashtag no more shame. So um, everyone who arrives here, by the way, you guys, uh, they deserve unconditional love and acceptance and welcoming and safety. So please always be kind and welcoming to every single person who arrives here with us. It takes a lot of courage to be here. It takes courage. It takes courage to log on. It takes courage to watch. So, and again, you will be blocked, removed, and unwelcome here if you choose to act in a way which is unkind towards any of our community members or anyone who shows up here. And you will not be welcome back with us here ever, ever, ever. So, in order for this to be a safe place, we need to adhere by some guidelines, that being one of them. And we each need to be mindful and step away if we are triggered. And rather than seek help here, uh, in the box, in the text box, or in the comment section below on a replay, we need to step away and we need to contact one of the crisis helplines, reach out to a safe person, speak to our practitioner, trauma-informed practitioner would be best. And lastly, thank you all for being here once again and supporting one another. You guys are truly why this community is so beautiful and powerfully transforming. And I am humbled 
that you guys show up here week after week and you have been for over four years. And I just, I just love you guys. And uh, I look forward to seeing you here all the time. So I'm sending you, each of you, a lot of strength and support and um, just grateful that you choose to be here. Um, you're not here by accident. I don't believe that you are here by accident. You belong here. You are worthy. You are good. You are lovable. And you are safe here. So um, any thumbs up, once again, that you bless me with helps, uh, helps my channel and helps other survivors all around the world receive trauma-informed information and they, they find a community where they can come and they can heal. Um, and that's it for the, for the PSAs. So thanks for being here. I would love to, to answer some of your guys' questions. Let's see. Um, I have a screen share here of the workflow we've been going through lately that we'll go through. But how are you guys doing? Um, I'm in a different room. I know I, I always get emails and voice messages from you guys like, where are you at, Athena? Are you traveling again? What's the deal? Um, I'm just in a different room. I live in an apartment and I'm usually in the kitchen when I'm recording and hanging out with you guys. Right now I happen to be in the bedroom. So um, my nephew's coming to visit and trying to get into the sort of hang of you know, hanging out with us and then I can still do my work. So um, Let's see who's all here so far. I want to say hello really quickly to Shannon O'Brien and John Hardy. And uh, thank you to Matt for moderating as always. Zoe. And hello to John Hardy and to Hunter. And to all of you guys that are hanging out over here. If you're, if you're here live, there's a chat box right over here, and everyone is hanging out over the questions and supporting one another in a safe, respectful, kind way. And they're all very welcoming. And I would love for you to receive some, some support. If you're watching a replay of Ku TV, welcome, welcome. And please leave a comment below and let me know what questions you might have. Or if you have a comment on the videos, um, please leave a comment and I will respond when I can, as soon as I can. It's hard to keep up with everybody's comments. It's hard to keep up with everything, but I'll do the very best I can. Before I forget um, to mention it, oh, I think I have it on the page. I might not have it on the page. I might not have it where we're discussing the feelings. I think I do. But before I forget, please, if you want to get plugged into and you're not already plugged into one of our safe groups online, then email at cptsdfoundation.org, and then she'll get you plugged into the groups. Um, I believe mistaken, she will be vetting people once a week on Thursdays or Fridays. So if you haven't gotten an email back from Lisa Brett, she's going to get to you. We just have a huge influx of people. Our community is growing at a very rapid pace and it's hard to stay on top emails and all the things. Um, and if you are looking for daily recovery support on um, the telephone, a lot of you have been sending letters actually saying, I don't like you know, social media. It's for me, it's not something I'm okay with safe on social media. I don't want to do social media, but the only way that you provide support, Athena, is on so social media. So are you ever, you know, or if I hire you and I'm one of your private clients, which I can't do. And so how can I receive support if you're only on social media and I don't do social media? So the answer to that is that we're doing daily calls, daily live calls. And it's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's a group. It's whoever calls in, and we'll be discussing a certain topic of the day. If there's a question that someone um, puts out, or they email, or we'll we'll find our groove. We're gonna find our groove. We're doing beta testing uh, sometime this month in March, and then it'll go actually live next month in April, and it's gonna be between twenty and fifty dollars a month um, per person, and it'll be three hundred and sixty-five days a year. So. Um, definitely be looking forward to that and send an email if you're interested in the subject line, put daily recovery support. Um, 
email lisa at cptsdfoundation.org. And yeah, so we're going to dive right in and we're going to talk about um, good feelings, happy feelings, and why they're, why they're difficult, why they're painful. Um, I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions. Question is from Joey. Joey says, I'm afraid to be happy. Whenever I'm happy, something bad always happens. Even now as an adult, when things are going smoothly and I'm feeling good, something's, and someone always says it's my fault. Just like it was when I was younger. I'm afraid that I'm going to be unhappy because I am so scared that something bad is going to happen. It is keeping me from achieving my goal of becoming a coach because I am scared that it is going to turn into something horrible. Any suggestions? And the same goes with relationships and friendships. I'm scared to start one because if I am happy, the relationship or friendship will end. So this is super duper duper common. I am going to go through the this, the workflow, the, the framework of how we're navigating through our feelings. I'm going to go through that in a minute. But I want to I want to address this. Um, first of all, Joey, you're not alone. Um, many of us have been in such a state of survival mode and such a state of tr trauma for most of our lives that when we begin to feel anything good, and when we were younger, when we were younger, we would get our hopes up. We were in a state of trauma and we were being abused or neglected or, and, whether, and it could have been any type of abuse, you guys. It could have been verbal abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, religious abuse, cult abuse, um, neglect. Uh, did I already say emotional abuse? Because it's it's a thing. Uh, and there's, a, there's all different genres of abuse that we can endure and go through from the time we're very, very, very young. And what we think when we're a child is something must be wrong with me which is why that thing keeps happening to me and I keep getting in trouble and I keep making bad things happen. I'm the cause of the bad things that are happening. And if I was just, if I could just figure out a way to be good, then it wouldn't happen anymore. So I know what I'll do. I'll do this one thing. <laughs> and then we figure out a thing that we're going to do different because that's going to be the one thing that makes everything better we're a child and that's magical thinking we know as adults that you know you can't fix all your problems by doing one thing differently but when you're a child you can't believe how hard it is to be so much abuse and, and frustration and um and fear and unsafety and uncertainty and feelings of um loneliness or un you, you feel unacceptable or like some like everybody's looking at you or just horrible things are going wrong in your life and so what you do is you try to figure out, I know, I know, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'll do everything different. I'm going to do this one thing or all the things different. And then as I do this one thing or all the things different, then I won't be unacceptable anymore. I won't be bad anymore. I won't get in trouble anymore. I won't get yelled at anymore. I won't get physically abused anymore. I won't get screamed at anymore. I won't get ignored. I won't get picked on. I won't get bullied. I won't be tricked into doing the thing that I keep getting tricked into doing. And so we get our hopes up that we finally figured it out. And it's a hopeful, good feeling. And we're almost happy. Like, yes, I know I figured it out. It's going to be, this is going to be the thing. And then we try and sadly, the goalposts get moved. The rules change. The, the target gets moved. The expectations change. And the person or persons that were in our life that were abusive or tyrannical or bullying or just horrible people that don't have any business raising children or taking care of children, they change the rules on us or they just in their own um, place of being inept and in their own dysfunction and lack of compassion and lack of responsibility, they, it, they continue to abuse us. And so we got our hopes up for nothing. And so anytime we start to feel hopeful, we know for sure, because if that happens often enough, over and over and over and over and over and over again, there's a pattern. And our subconscious knows that when we begin to do something, the bottom's going to drop out. 
the rug's going to get ripped out from underneath us. Something's going to change. It's not going to be enough. Why? Because we're not enough. We're not going to be able to figure it out. We blame ourselves. That's just what happens with abuse survivors, trauma survivors, anyone who is living with CPTSD symptoms or has survived complex trauma. That's what happens. That's our reality. So um, Joey goes on to to talk about this and says it's the same way with relationships. I agree. I've been through a lot of this. And she says, any suggestions? So the only suggestions that I have for you guys, obviously, is what I know has worked for me personally or has worked for private clients. And that is, I know this this sounds very rudimentary and, and I'm going to lose half of you and people are just going to click off and they're going to be over it. But but what we do is we have to write out, like write down the actual facts of what, what's going on. Journaling helps with this immensely because we because what happens, especially if there was gaslighting going on in our childhood or in our adulthood, we don't believe that reality is reality. We question our version of reality. So if we journal, or actually, you know who has great things? Matt, Matt at Surviving My Past, um, who is our moderator, Beyond, at beyond your past, he has these tracker sheets where you actually track what it is that's going on in your day, and you do this for enough enough times, and you begin to see patterns in your life on how you handle things, and when you track how it is that you're feeling, and you track what it is that's coming at you, the feelings and how it is that they're showing up, and you begin to notice that when certain things show up, you respond a certain way. And after a while, you notice, you know what? This, this one time, I responded differently. I responded in a different way, and I didn't feel the same way. I didn't track the same feelings of doom and dread and grief and horror. I, I tracked different feelings. Um, but my, my big piece of advice, Joey, is, is just don't give up. Whatever you do, don't give up because you will figure it out. I lived an entire life of, of horror and trauma and everything that you've described. And after a while, as I changed on the from the inside out and started doing different things and changing my habits, the world around me changed. I was attracting different types of people. I was attracting safer people. And I was becoming more hopeful as I was keeping track of how it was that I was showing up in the world and how it was that I was feeling. So I'm not sure if you guys are, are getting this, but like every minute or every few minutes, there's this weird like scrambly thing that happens on the computer. And I was having some issues um, with my Wi-Fi. And I don't know if it's happening again, but if it is, I do apologize. So um, I'm going to move on to the next question, which is from John Harvey. John Harvey says, when I was 20, I woke up feeling like something was wrong, and it was because I started feeling good for the first time. Feeling good was alien to me, and it scared me. I just wanted to share that. You know, sometimes that still happens to me, John Harvey. Sometimes I'll wake up feeling really, really great, and then it'll sort of like shock me, like, wait a second, I was really struggling yesterday. I was having some feelings of fear or unsafety or grief, or I was feeling really overwhelmed. And then I wake up and I'm feeling really, really, really great. And I'm like, oh my goodness, something bad's probably going to happen because I'm feeling really good, you know, and I get stuck in that sometimes still. So I definitely resonate with that, John and Harvey. And mine wasn't 20. I think mine was something. When did I move to Hawaii? I think I was 33. <laughs> so, or maybe I was 31. 31 or 30, but when I moved here, um, I was feeling like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm safe for like the first time. But it's one of those things where you're like, wherever I go, there I am. So I was like, I know I'm going to mess this up. I know I'm going to sabotage it somehow because there's one common denominator and all the bad things that have happened in my life and it's me. And so... I must have caused all the bad stuff. And so I need to be really mindful. So I started really digging deep and doing my hard work. I had all about five hours of my work, um, but I wasn't really like pushing myself. Like 
I'm going to heal. I'm still in denial most of my abuse and most of my trauma when I'm at that point. Good for you, John Harvey, that um, you were able to know something good was very alien to you. That's a, that's a huge thing to recognize in ourselves. That's great self -love. And I'm hoping that you have more feelings like that so that feeling good isn't alien to you after a while. Um, thanks for says, happy thoughts of future relationships cause a shame reaction because I know there will be mild involved. It is my brain that touch can be safe. Thank you for sharing that. A lot of clients that struggle with this physical touch. When we have had touch in our lives be something that caused us trauma or safety or horror or fill the negative connotation that physical touch can can cause one who's unsafe or in, a, in, in an inappropriate way, you have a hard time even envisioning what it would be like to have healthy physical touch and and I want to mention this as well Hunter and for anyone else that that, that has um, um, struggles with physical touch I know about it as well like I didn't know that the physical touch that I had already experienced in my life was not healthy physical touch I thought it was healthy and good physical touch like I was in complete denial that I had incurred such abuse and trauma because it was all I really knew. And since I was in a time sort of accepting that it wasn't my fault and my stuff, I wanted to own my junk, right, and, and work on myself. And so uh, I remember saying to my husband, and I remember saying, I know what good and healthy physical touch feels like. And this, like, I don't know about this, you know. And I remember just being so critical and, and just unaware that anything I had, I mean, I knew that I had been through hard things and bad things and bad things had happened. But I didn't know that, um, that almost inappropriate and probably not the healthiest and probably not the best. So um, that's great awareness on your part. Uh, and, you know, we can be in complete denial about stuff and not even realize it. It's not like when we're in denial, we're, on, we're in denial on purpose. We're in denial because we don't know. <laughs> it's ignorance. <laughs> we're, we're denying that it's going wrong because it's probably a coping strategy. It's probably a survival mechanism. We had to deny our reality when we were younger because if we fully accepted the reality of what was going on in our lives, we probably would have given up. I probably wish I could never survive this. This is crazy. This is stressful. What am I going to do? You know? And so um, it's, we don't always recognize for what it is. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't always recognize trauma for what it is right off the bat. Sometimes it takes some time, like quite a bit of time. So I, I understand what Hunter's saying here about thoughts of physical touch, even just innocent, playful, mild physical touch. They can bring on feelings of tremendous shame because we can't imagine them being good. We can't imagine not feeling triggered. And, um, you know, interestingly, Hunter, um, and anyone else that sort of resonates with this particular question, um, it, it could be a good, you know, you're thinking, oh, good, I'm going to have healthy physical touch in my future. And, oh, good, like, I'm kind of excited about that. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm hopeful that that will happen. And then all of a sudden, you just have these feelings of shame and doom and fear and, uh, and like, I mean, I know what that feels like. And so many of us do. Um, but Hunter, what I wanted, what I wanted to share is, you know, I'm going through a season of my life right now, you know, in my own healing journey, where I've sort of like divorced myself from the need for physical touch. I sort of 
like separated myself completely lately from just the thought of physical touch or physical intimacy. And I'm not proud of that, but I'm I'm just wanting to respect my process. I'm in I'm in a process right now. I'm going through a stage of my trauma recovery when I'm I'm just I'm not able to accept or even hope for good things. I'm scared of it. I'm nervous about it. And so, you know, there's no shame in that. I mean, do I feel ashamed of it sometimes? Yeah, but I'm doing my best not to shame myself in those ways because it's not going to do me any good. I just have to communicate as clearly and openly and lovingly as possible to my husband because he is so patient and um, and just hope that he understands and hopes, hope that he um, will continue to be supportive and kind and patient and loving and you know that's really key finding finding a healthy person finding a safe person who understands that this is a process and that it's going to take a while sometimes so um oh sharon says sharon has a question sharon says is there a time of day you recommend journaling or how frequently per day um and what i would say is i think it if you're going to do tracker sheets, like I recommend, I would start in the morning and just sort of like when you first, first, first wake up and definitely just, or if you're journaling and you're down at the bottom, whenever you write anything, you could write current mood, colon, CM, colon, you know, groggy, angry, frustrated, happy, joyful, hopeful, um, numb, nothing. Um, however it is you're feeling and, and I would do it you know several times a day whenever because this is this is the thing you guys this is this is the thing we're going through this whole series on feelings this whole series that we're doing on feelings we are going to need to become experts at figuring out whether or not we are feeling an authentic feeling instead of a trauma response it's Important for us to and figure that out because if we're we'll be, if once we figure out how often we're in the midst of a trauma response or if we're feeling an authentic feeling feeling is half the battle because then you can be like oh well I noticed that I'm actually feeling authentic feelings in the mornings when I wake up and then once I leave for work then it seems as though I'm in a trauma response for most of the day until I get back. That's a good indicator that perhaps, um, you know, driving or your work environment or people go deeper and figure out why, why that is. Or some people feel in, you know, fear and unsafety or stress or numb or, you know, something negative. And then when they get to work, they're feeling great. They're like, I'm great at what I do. I feel confident. I'm interacting with others. I'm this whole different person. And then when I'm I'm alone at home by myself, I'm afraid and I'm not feeling good. And then we can sort of delve deeper into that and figure out why and talk with our, our trauma practitioner about that, you know, our, our trauma-informed practitioner. Um, oh, someone emailed me this week and says, it says, it says all over your websites that you can heal without a therapist. Um, can I get more information about that or something like that? And I thought, my goodness, is it all over our, our FAQ and um, section of all of our websites that you can that you can heal without a without a therapist? And I'm like, is that true? Can I heal without a therapist? And I thought to myself, well, I suppose I can heal without a therapist, um, but I'm going to heal at an exponential rate if I do have a trauma informed therapist and I'm in safe community with other people and I'm learning about myself and I'm becoming more self-aware and I'm being more intentional about my daily habits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I need to respond to that. So if that's one of you guys, I, I don't remember who emailed that over. It was to the cptsdfoundation.org email address, I believe. And um, and it was, I, I just didn't get a chance to respond. Sorry about the video being choppy tonight, guys. I'm not sure exactly. 
So I apologize. Uh, Miss Beach Boxer sent in a question. She says, I heard that maybe the reason I, I won't feel normal, happy, is because I won't feel my anger. I'm working on it. Anyone else? Um, yes. I would, I would say, first of all, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best not to even agree with this statement because there is this obstinate, like, teenage type younger part in me that wants to be like, who's that person? F that person. They don't, they don't need to tell you how to feel. <laughs> what do you mean they're, you're not going to ever feel normal and, and feel happy because you won't feel your anger? <laughs> <laughs> so automatically, like I'm sitting with this and I'm going, well, that's a younger part of me who's obviously angry. <laughs> and so <laughs> the angry, angsty, teenagery type person in me, like my younger, my younger, you know, sort of protector self wants to like get really protective of you, Miss Beachboxer, and be like, who said that? <laughs> you know, but um, I always say that we say this a lot on this channel and we say if, if we're ever going to heal, we have to feel all our feels. Got to feel all our feels if we're ever going to heal. And um, that is true that you might not feel full feelings of happiness and joy if you don't at some point experience fully your anger. So that is a little bit true. Um, but I do believe that you guys, that we're all on a journey and this is a process. And as long as we're doing the very best we can and we're working on ourselves and we're not just sitting dormant going, well, this is the best version I'm ever going to be. No need to learn anything new. No need to do anything. I'm just going to sit here and wait to die. Like as long as that's not the mindset that we're in, I do believe that we're going to feel, we're going to live full lives and we're going to reach out and we're going to help others and we're going to reach our goals and we're going to get to a place where we're not feeling hopeless and helpless and awful and um, fill in the blank of a negative emotion all the time. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, Kate says, I would like to know if Athena has any tips for the adverse reaction, like crying if I laugh or feeling hopeless if someone gives me a compliment. What can I do in the moment? Oh, Kate. Someone tag Kate. Welcome, Kate. I'm not sure if you've ever asked a question before, but I don't know if I've seen your name. And so if this is the first time I'm meeting you, welcome, welcome to our community. I'm so excited you're here. And um, I feel like you might have like been here at my house last week or something <laughs> because this happened to me last week. <laughs> Kate, this happened to me last week. Oh, my goodness. So. I have um, I have some mentors in my life that are like virtual mentors where I like I've literally like read every one of their books I've watched every one of their YouTube videos or I'm in their you know their group coaching programs or I listen to their podcast or I um, I've attended an event that they've spoken at or, or what have you like I've had amazing mentors in my life that I that I have not necessarily met personally and had one-on-one -on -one telephone conversations every week with, but but yet they've been a tremendous influence in my life because they were a healthy role model that perhaps I never had. So I received, um, I got contacted last week. Maybe this is the week before. I can't remember now. Oh my gosh, Matt would know. Um, it was either last week or the week before. I got contacted by one of my mentors that I really look up to and it was their office, you know, reaching out to me to get my information um, for future collab future collaborations and, you know, just possibly working together and, you know, working on a project together or just connecting further. And this was, um, this was something like I was overjoyed, Kate. I was feeling overjoyed and so hopeful and so incredibly grateful that I just started to weep. I, I don't know. I just, I was just crying and I was like frozen and 
I, I just, I wasn't really even sure like what to do or like how to handle it. it you know what it was similar to, Kate? It was similar to um, when newborn, when babies are born, when newborn babies cry or when you witness the birth of a baby or the birth of kittens or the birth of puppies or the birth of a cat like if a horse has a calf um, or, or our cow had a baby when I was little, you know, um, I just, I began to like, like weep, like just physically it, it overtook me and I wanted to be happy and joyful. And my initial response was like, no way. I was like so happy. And then all of a sudden it was just like, Oh, and I just, it, I just started to weep and cry uncontrollably. Um, and I noticed that you've put, the word you use to describe that is that it's an adverse reaction. And I don't know, I don't know, Kate, if it's an adverse reaction. Because I, I even took it to my trauma therapist. And I was like, why is this? And, you know, I was just so like, you know, and I was really, concerned like why did I respond this way and this isn't the first time I've responded this way this is something I do you know and like why and I don't want to do this and um, I know uh, that it's a similar thing Kate and for anyone else that this resonates with it's similar to when I was younger and Kate I don't know your background but I'm gonna tell you a brief version of mine to see if this matches up when I was younger and I would get my hopes up or I would I would feel like something good was gonna happen. It was always sort of the precipice or it was a precursor to something really traumatic or painful or abusive or exploitative that would happen in my life. So for instance, I would like I, I wrote about this in an essay that was published. I don't even know what where it was published anymore. I for completely forget it was like three or four years ago, but I talked about how my mother bought me a brand new outfit and it turns out she was taking me to the nail salon to take me in there and then end up sending me out on a date with the owner of the nail salon, which is childhood sexual exploitation. Like that's called trafficking. <laughs> and so, and that was traumatic for me. And I have bits and pieces that are very spotty memories of that. And so I was so excited to have this brand new outfit and to go actually get my nails done and like hang out with my mom. But it was actually just a ploy to sort of pimp me out. And so it was this joy that was like crestfallen and I was disappointed and traumatized by what happened in that moment. And so the way that relates to what we're talking about now in present day when something good happens or I want to laugh and feel joy and be excited, but then it turns into like tears and feelings of pain or, or grief or weeping or crying and, and what you're calling an adverse reaction. What I believe and what my trauma therapist confirmed for me is that it's my automatic like visceral response to something good because good things always meant that something bad was coming. And that is sort of the climax of the entire video. Thank you guys, you can all go home now. I'm just kidding. But I'm, I'm saying like that is the basis for this video. Like many children had their hopes up that finally this was gonna be the thing, that it was gonna change everything. The abuse was gonna stop. You know, no more bad things are gonna happen. This is gonna be it, this is gonna be it. And they get their hopes up and it, and the feeling of hopefulness and good was a precursor for disappointment and hopelessness and tragedy and disappointment and just being completely crushed and devastated. And so it goes along the same lines, Kate, as when you said, um, if someone gives you a compliment, um, I've shared this on this channel before and it's not, it's not something that I'm like really, really proud of. Um, but I was recording a live video and I was reading the Twitter chat one night and someone on the Twitter chat, this is probably about three and a half years ago, three years ago, I was reading the Twitter chat and someone gave me a compliment on the Twitter chat while I was recording the live video. And, um, I shared this with my therapist last week when I talked about the phone call that I got or the, the contact that I got from my mentor and the same response happened. But during the video that I was recording, just like I am right now, looking at you guys, 
and this is, I'm still on Kate's question and then anybody else um, that that happens to understand or, or re this question resonates with them. Um, I was sitting here reading the Twitter chat while I'm recording the video and someone complimented me and I actually lost my bladder. Like I peed myself. I'm not proud of that. It's not something I want. Like obviously I'm sharing it with the entire world on YouTube, but subconsciously complimenting my appearance when I was a child meant that bad things were going to happen. You know, I looked pretty. I looked perfect. I, you know, my hair looked nice. My makeup looked good. Like those types of physical compliments were something that were a precursor to horrific, horrific things that happened, whether it was exploitation or abuse or trauma of some kind. It was never just the compliment or just the good thing. It was always attached to, there was, it always came at a price. It came at a cost. And so I think um, when I got that compliment during the live stream broadcast, it must have just triggered me into a very unsafe place. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have lost my bladder. Um, I don't know if I played it off like everything was fine or not. I'm not very good at playing anything off like it's fine. So I'm sure if I wanted to find that video, I could. But I don't like rewatching myself on video. In fact, I don't rewatch myself on video if I can help it. Um, so I just want you to know that you're not alone, Kate. And what you can do in the moment is the only thing that I have learned to do over time. And that is in your mind and out loud, if you can, remind yourself that you're safe. I am safe now. I am safe now. And one of the things that's helped me a lot, and I learned this in trauma therapy actually, um, is I, I recite the date. And I talk about what year it's in. We're in the year 2018 and it's, you know, it's March 5th. And and uh, I just remind myself. And so when those those good things come and those happy things come and those hopeful, the hopeful times come and it comes attached with it, a feeling of dread or fear or unsafety or terror. Terror is something that is attached very closely with hopefulness, um, dread. Um, doom, dying, um, these are things that were often um, attached very closely when you were younger. Like here you are, you're a child, you have bad things that are happening to you. You have this idea that if you do this, 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 and this, it's finally going to be the time that everything's going to get better. And then when it doesn't, because bad things happen with abusive people and horrific consequences come because of their neuroses, their dysfunction, their pathology, we attach the feeling of good and hopefulness to them. And it's like one doesn't come away from the other. And so when we feel good things or hopeful things or, or um, things that could be positive, it's difficult for us to accept those things separate from the trauma that followed when we were younger. So I'm hoping that that has been helpful for you guys. I want to run through the framework. Um, I don't think I have any more questions for tonight. Thank you guys so much for sending in all of your questions. Um, I hope it was helpful. I'm going to go through really quickly the framework, um, the workflow of when we're experiencing a feeling and when we're triggered into another feeling. And then I'll let you guys go for the night. It was super fast. I feel like it went really, really fast tonight. Um, I do have something like kind of exciting to share with you guys. You know how I have my my little um, my crochet koozie for my mason jar that Christy Q from Love Jungle Crochet. I took it to Tampa with me um, to take pictures in a photo shoot, and then I'm not able to find it right now. Like I I don't know where I put it. I can't locate it, and so I ordered this one on on um, Etsy. Isn't it so cute? It's a unicorn.
that's not the cutest little thing you've ever seen. Our unicorn cozy. It's amazing. I love it. Totally not on topic, but you got to admit, it's like really, really cute, right? Maybe you guys aren't fans of unicorns, but I think it's cute. So, all right, I'm going to go through the workflow with you guys really quick, and then I'll let you guys go. Let me see if you guys can see this. Screen share. How is that? Can you guys see that okay? Okay. So we're on week eight of the series that we're doing on feelings. And tonight, the feelings that we're describing and that we're discussing are feelings of happiness, joy, excitement, success, goodness, and hopefulness, and why they can cause us to feel triggered into an emotional flashback. So really quickly, before we go down there, we're going to come up here. And I want to remind you guys, if you're not in a free support group, please email lisa at cptsdfoundation.org. And she will get you uh, plugged in and welcomed into a free, safe support group. And then don't forget to ask Lisa. Send an email if you're interested in the daily recovery support calls on the telephone that are coming soon. You know what I should do? I should put a little picture of a telephone here. I should find one of those little emojis or something. So this is the framework that um, we're going through on this series that we have on feelings. This is the workflow for how I am currently navigating through my feelings, because that's what we have to do. We have to navigate through our feelings, not over, around, or under them. We have to actually feel them and move through them in order to heal. So like, the first one here is is trigger. We're mentioning a trigger. And all that means is what, if anything, does this feeling I'm having remind me of? Is this a familiar feeling that I'm having? So let's just use the example that Kate sent in about feeling, um, you know, laughing or, or feeling something good or hopeful and then having it be sort of a, a negative response or a fearful response or a feeling of dread followed by something that's um, that's an adverse response, okay? So here we are. I'm feeling like I've succeeded at something, right? Or I'm hopeful at the continuation of a collaboration or something with my mentor that contacted me, his team contacted me, and I'm triggered into an emotional flashback of like doom and, and I'm weeping. And I'm, and I'm terrified, right? So this is a trigger. And it is a familiar feeling because I'm asking myself, is this, what does this feeling remind me of? Is this feeling familiar? So then I'm remembering and I bring it into my, my trauma-informed therapist and I share what's going on and then I match it up with how I felt previously in that. So now I know that I'm in an emotional flashback, which is just like a classic PTSD flashback only there's not one particular instance that I can point to. It's just an overall feeling of fill in the blank. Like let's just say dread or grief or horror or fear um, that happens or even just a sick, nauseous feeling. I was nauseous and paralyzed and numb for the better part of a week when this happened. There were some other things that were going on um, that I hadn't put two and two together with, but I'm you know finally putting two and two together. So, um, so an emotional flashback is what we're in, right? And then uh, this, I'm just going to read through this for those of you who are watching for the very first time and you haven't been here for the last seven weeks. I may not be able to pinpoint the exact time and place I'm being taken back to with this emotional flashback. And that's a hundred percent. Okay. It doesn't mean that we've failed. It doesn't mean that we failed if we can't pinpoint where we're being taken back to. We know that this feeling is familiar at this point. So that's 100% okay. I may need to consider one reason for this. And when I say one reason for this, like why I'm not able to, why I'm not able to, to pinpoint the exact time and place. So one reason I may not be able to pinpoint the exact time and place could be because there were so many times that I felt this way, fill in the blank. 
unsafe, unworthy, bad, ashamed, afraid, or even happy and hopeful. So please go slow and be kind to yourselves during this process, okay guys? So then I'm asking myself, I'm working through this and I'm going, okay, well, am I in a fight, flight, freeze, or fawn? Trauma response. And remember, these four Fs are as per Pete Walker's book, Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving. So that's a great resource for any of us on this channel to have. Where am I at if I'm, if I'm feeling call from my mentor and I'm grieving and I'm weeping even though I'm hopeful but I'm not and I'm just concerned and I don't know why I'm not feeling fantastic and good why am I frozen and paralyzed and crying and and so I think in that moment I was feeling frozen and I think I wanted to hide so that's flight I was feeling frozen and paralyzed and I wanted to, to hide. Like, maybe I was feeling shame. Not sure. I think I was feeling unworthy, right? So which one applies? So now I know that it was freeze and flight. And then in this moment, I needed to, to sit with this. And I needed to recognize that I was in distress. And remind myself that I can tolerate it. Because I have distress tolerance skills. I have been through skills-based modalities that help with trauma, and I have tolerated so much from my childhood and survived so much trauma that even though I'm in distress right now, I know I can tolerate it. I am safe. I am safe. It's 2018. It's March 5th. I am safe. I'm no longer a child. I'm an adult. I'm safe. I have the ability to create safety in my life. So I help myself build my distress tolerance skills. Okay? So in this moment, I need to communicate my need. I can handle this feeling I am having. Look at all I have survived. I am worth speaking up for. Or even I'm worth sitting with. Let's add that. I am worth sitting with. And let's add, I am worthy of good feelings. I have the ability to create safety in my life. Okay? We're building our distress tolerance. So we move down, and I'm observing my behaviors. I'm observing. And these don't have to go in order, you guys. These are just things. That's why I don't have them numbered like one, two, three, four, like, and then five. Like, you can move, flow back and forth between these. You can do these in any order. These are just good things to keep in mind. So I'm going to observe my behaviors, right? And I'm going to remind myself that I reacted according, I reacted accordingly in an appropriate way. Now, why is weeping and crying and feeling unsafe and ashamed and unworthy appropriate if I receive a call from or, or a contact or an email from a mentor of mine who may want to collaborate with me in the future? Well, the reason that that's an appropriate response, considering, because I've been through so much trauma that good things that happen often had bad things attached to it. There were often conse consequences that were bad. So I need to remind myself that it's that I'm only responding in an appropriate way that is familiar to me from my childhood, right? So I'm, I'm validating what I've been through. I'm never minimizing what I've been through and I'm advocating for myself. Self-advocacy is big, okay? And I'm self-soothing. So what did I do in that moment? Well, I made a phone call to a friend and a colleague of mine and I talked and then I allowed myself to rest and self-soothing sometimes self-soothing can be unhealthy you know like overeating 
um, addictions, eating disorders, over-exercising, um, self-harm, suicidal ideation. Those are ways that we soothe ourselves by numbing, stuffing, or avoiding. That's why I put in parentheses that I want to self-soothe in a healthy way, which is what I did. Um, I reminded myself, you know, that I was safe and I reached out to a friend and I interrupted the emotional flashback by contacting another person and by talking. And then I practiced some self-care, right? I reminded myself again that I'm safe and then I rested a little bit and then I reminded myself that I need to be patient with myself. And I reminded myself that I'm worthy of not rushing. I'm worthy of all the time it takes to heal. And then just lastly, remind yourself again that patience is definitely a key. It's the key to healing. If we try to rush the process, we won't heal fully. So give yourself as much time as you need or have. And again, the reason I put one or the other here is because I know that a lot of you are moms or dads and you're in charge of kids and you have little ones that you are responsible for. And sometimes you don't have all the time you need. You only have the time that you have. So take as much time as you can and be very kind to yourself and very patient, okay? And again, please remember that you're worthy of all the time and effort that it takes to heal, okay? You really are. I'm going to keep reminding you of that. So please do your best to make time for you because we are worth it. We are. We are worth it. We are. We are. And again, email lisa at cptsdfoundation.org if you would like to be welcomed into one of our safe groups. They're free. Or you can email her now about an affordable monthly subscription, which will offer daily live phone calls for men and women working their way through recovery beginning in March, sometime this month. Now, I'm not sure of the date yet. I'll let you know on the date. And you can simply write daily recovery support in the subject line when you email lisa at cptsdfoundation.org. And you can finally get the support that you need because you deserve it. We all deserve it. We're all worth it, right? You deserve it. And you deserve a unicorn koozie, too, if it's something that you like. It just tickles me. It just tickles me, and it sparks joy. Like, it brings me so much happiness to know that I have a little unicorn on my cup. So, and I need to find the one that Christy made me because it's very special to me. Uh, she's one of our community members, and she has an Etsy shop called Love Jungle Crochet. Um, she didn't make this one in particular. She made a different one for me, but I need to find the original one. So thanks so much for being here, you guys. I ran a couple minutes over, but I value each and every one of you. And I'm glad you sent in your questions. I hope I answered all of your questions. And if this video was helpful to you or you feel that it would be helpful for someone else, could you please give the video a thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, I would love it if you would subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you're here live, you can um, comment over here, um, say hello, um, support one another as long as the chat is going. If you're on a replay, which will be up in about 15 minutes after I, after I stop the video, then please leave a comment below and um, let me know any questions that you might have about feelings of um, happiness and joy or good feelings that feel unsafe or have other feelings that come along with them. They're not just pure happiness or pure joy. And again, I'm sorry about the video quality tonight. I'm, I'm gonna have to look into what's going on with the Wi-Fi. So I apologize, but I'm so grateful that you guys are here every single week. I'll be here next Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, every single Monday, always, always, always. Um, and then we'll be doing the daily recovery support phone call five days a year which I'm really excited to offer so it won't always be me and it won't but it will it will be someone who's trauma informed and we will always make sure that there's just a place for you to come and receive the support that you so 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 deserve that you've always deserved now that you can finally get it so thanks again guys and I hope to see you here next week 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern on Monday and we're still going to be in our series on feelings for a little while now. Okay? Bye, everybody.